thanks for making time because you are super talented and super time limited i know with everything you've got going on i appreciate it what's your love language that's the next question minus words of affirmation so i'm taking all of your beautiful words and tucking them into my soul good yeah, I actually, when I was, I think, saying something affirming over there, I was, as I was saying it, I was like, I wonder if this actually likes this or she doesn't. What's your love language? Where's my love Okay, love that. Yeah. What's your, like, least one? What's, like, your last one? And like, I I don't even care if you do Might that for me. Might be quality time, honestly. Interesting. Mine's physical touch. Really? Because that's my second. I was mm-hmm. going to give you a hug, but you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm fine, like, no. giving a hug and stuff. <laughs> But, like, I have people who are, like, you know, they're, like, always, you know, Pawn with their you. friends and, like, touching other people and, like, always, you know, oh, like, too. wanting to hold hands. And I'm, like, oh, my gosh, don't touch me. But, like, in general, like, hugging people like that yeah. is not a problem for me at all. Like, like I, we were talking about the like, introverted and extroverted people, mm-hmm. like, oh, introverts, like, hate people. It's, yeah. like, total misconception. Right. It's all about recharging your heart and, like, <laughs> where you love being. Yeah. Not that you hate being, you know, around other people. So, yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to cheers you. Cheers, Yay. Emily. Welcome to Mom's Club. Thank you very much. <laughs> we have some chocolates here that Joe and Simone, our producers, got us today. And these are um, really exquisite Trader Joe's chocolates. Only the finest. Only the finest for the finest. Thank you. So, would you like one? Yeah, sure. Much appreciated. And let's see what kinds they are. Because usually they have that little insert thing. I don't know if they have this today. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Look. Tell me tell what you have found here. Oh. Okay, we got coconut us? crumb ball. Mm. Are you in a coconut? Oh, I see salt here. Mm. This is salted caramel. Uh, chocolate crunch is over here. Uh, cafe macchiato. Are you into macchiatos? Brazilian orange. Do you like the chocolate orange combination? Not, not my not thing. Not my thing either. No. Okay, don't I don't love say, chocolate orange. One, but I one of you not. love chocolate orange? Uh, you can Joe have that it. one. Throw it to Joe. Sicilian yeah. lemon. Lemon and chocolate, not my no, thing either. I'm not a fruit chocolate person. Yeah, not me either. Um, key lime pie. My oh. husband loves key lime pie. Does he really? I uh, Our neighbor gifted us one recently, so I told the boys, I was like, we're going to have treats after dinner. And I don't think Daniel had ever had one before. Like, I don't know if they have them in the Netherlands. Um, but they were, all of them hated it. They're like, what, what is, is this? this? That's funny. I, I feel like, that sorry, way about key lime pie treat. too. I'm like, what is this? Uh, that, oh, Simply Chocolate. That's this one. Okay. All right. So, Any nuts? Anyone with nuts? There is no nuts. Interesting. I don't know this if it's like a says, nuts aller- allergy-free thing. It says it's an indulgent assortment. So I don't know if nuts fall under the indulgent category. Mm. You never know. But yes, okay. there's like something for everybody. Coconut, lime, lemon, orange, regular chocolate. So you um, pick first. But you are my beautiful guest. Okay. And I, I will, will do Cafe Macchiato. Nice. I like a little mocha coffee. There you go. Oh gosh, this okay. is gonna be hard to grab. It. <laughs> oh, it's two levels. Oh wow! Okay, <laughs> double it up. Well, we could pick the same one then. That's but I was actually true. gonna go for the coconut. Oh, you're so, a coconut gal today. Anyways, okay. let's try that. Okay. That so is... the most important and first question of see, I feel like moms they always start by talking about um, their kids, mm-hmm. right? Because our kids are like the world, but. Moms are people too, obviously. So for Moms Club, we start with what is your Myers Briggs? Nope. I'm going to put my chocolate behind this so it's mm-hmm. not like sitting there and I can enjoy it throughout our conversation. That was very dainty the way you took a little bite and. I do, well, I should I like pop the mouth. whole thing in my mouth and you're like trying to <laughs> answer your question mm-hmm. while I'm chomping down? So Myers Briggs, my Myers Briggs, is there an option for Myers Briggs for people who don't care about their Myers Briggs? <laughs> There because is. I know I have so many friends who love this. I know I'm an introvert. That's I, right? I or E. I. Okay. Introvert, yes. I'm an introverted person, which people struggle to believe for someone who gets up and gives talks in front of mm-hmm. five thousand people. Like, oh, you have you must be an extrovert. Mm-hmm. What like my profession? You know, like everybody's profession isn't necessarily based on whether they're an introvert right. or extrovert. And that's the thing: you can be a successful introvert doing really anything, and same with an extrovert. Yes. It doesn't determine your destiny. Yes. And then I believe I'm an N. Which is those? The, I think you're an N, intuitive, intu, intuitor. So I'm an N2, intuitor okay. versus sensor. Okay. So you're more likely to notice like associations and like have like deep thoughts when you enter a room than like when you enter a room, notice like, oh, there's this painting here and um, the architecture is interesting. Okay. Like usually they're less spatially aware as an example. Like my husband is more of an S and he's like, can he notices architecture? He notices like remembers how things look exactly. Okay. Simone, am I getting this right? Could you explain for the audience out there, like, all the different forms that you can think of? 
<laughs> most I mean, people know. I feel like most people know they're Myers Briggs. You got so like, Come on. I'm an INFJ. Or this I, is Mom's Club. Oh, we don't explain sorry. things. No. Um, what is Myers Briggs? It's a personality assessment test that we're talking about. And E is extrovert versus introvert. Mm-hmm. So you're an introvert. I'm an extrovert. Mm-hmm. You're an N, which is uh, intuitor mm-hmm. versus a sensor. So it's more of a like person that sees associations and kind of thinks through like connections versus like they're more, I guess, by the book and they they take in – that's how you take in data actually. Okay. You take in data in a more empirical way. Like this is a can and I'm going to drink out of it versus like – this reminded me of like the time that I was seeing the sun explosion and that, that the sun is the center of the universe and this can is kind of the center of my universe right now. Whatever weird thoughts we think about yeah. things, right? Mm-hmm. And then what's your next letter? Do you know? So there's four I honestly letters. think I'm right between an F and a T. I mean, I, I'm like I think that's true right for you, Emily. In the middle. I think that's true for you. I think I maybe lean one degree more F, yeah. so I'll go with F. Yeah. And then definitely a J. I, I believe I'm an INFJ. INFJ. That's a what beautiful are you? temperament. I'm ENFP. Okay. So the F versus the T is the feeler versus the thinker. Mm-hmm. So the thinker is more methodical and like processes things in their thoughts okay. rather than immediately having usually stronger emotions. Okay. And then the J versus the P is like the judger versus perceiver. And judge is not like you're more judgmental, but that you're more prone to plan things out, anticipate um, outcomes and like plan for them. You appreciate something being done and completed than not. Okay. And P more likes to fly from the seat of their pants. Like they're more, you can be very creative and be a J, but P's like are less prone to complete their project. Um, they like to start a thousand at a time and that's like joy for them as mm-hmm. opposed to the J joy for them is the completion more than, mm. more than even the beginning. And here's the thing. We're here at mom's club and I yeah. feel like before being a mom, I was more of a P mm-hmm. and motherhood like transforms us so deeply like whether we like it or not like it yeah, happens within us and i feel like i've become more of a j mm. like over the process of being a mother do you enjoy being a j mother though like like because like, a j has to plan as a mom you have to plan mm-hmm. right the second you're like you have to have enough diapers does that stress you or does that do you enjoy that it i wouldn't say it stresses mm-hmm. stresses me it challenges me mm. because if i interesting I am a creative. Mm -hmm. I'm a writer. I'm an author. Mm -hmm. I love just writing. I'm a musician. I have all of that within me. And if you've ever known a musician in your life, ever known an author, a writer, we can be pretty disorganized, Mm -hmm. like kind of all over the place because you're dreaming about Mm -hmm. your next book and this story and all these Mm -hmm. things. But when you become a mother, like you cannot be like in la la land like you have to be in reality not procrastinating anything because these things have to get done well that's because like you need to get back it's not just for the sake of your kids being fed and nursed and down but you also for the time you're off creating and exploring you want to put that in a certain time frame because your kids need you Mm -hmm. you don't want to be gone from them for too long absolutely so you have to have a deadline yep so I can, I'm, I know that I'm very capable to live in that J kind of way. Mm. Um, it's not my preferred way to live if I was just like, you know, doing things the, the way that I wanted to, them to do. But that's why motherhood is a path to holiness mm. is because it's challenged me to live in that way of not procrastinating, you know, whatever it is when you're a mother, like the diaper has to be changed right now. Like the baby is wailing in the night. You have to get up. There's no option of like, Oh, I'll do it in an hour. So you're saying you were a P before and now you're a J. I would say so. How in- and you know what? I, I, it's interesting. Cause I think I'm a P now and I'm still a P, but I'm wrestling maybe more. Maybe you're more holy than me, Emily. I'm wrestling with like learning how to J it up mm. as a mom. I, there's a lot of J things in my home, but I think the, the, the the routines that are essential for healthy kids, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when they're very young. Yes. Um, you can either like embrace them or you can just struggle with them. Yes. Like really assent and make them a habit or just always kind of be struggling. And yeah, we've moved my my family, we've moved four times in the last like two years now. So like that's, that's hard to ones. build a routine mm-hmm. with. But um but you need to be a, you need to J. You need to have your J. But if you're a hardcore J and you're a mom, I'm gonna guess that you need to also have a P because kids are spontaneous. Yes. They are not robots. Mm-hmm. And they need to be able to do exploration and play. You need to not always stick to your schedule. You need to be open to like breaking the schedule. So the naturally J mother 
is going to have different struggles that mm-hmm. probably you and I don't have. That's true. I think one of the the I was telling you um, earlier about how I'm giving a talk on vocation, like women. Mm-hmm. What are we called to as women? And I think just looking at the vocation, like to marriage and motherhood, unpredictability as a like is such a golden thread of motherhood. Like you, when I talk to my friends who are sisters or whatever, like their life is very predictable. Like their routine like is religious there. Sisters religious sisters, religious sisters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like they get up at the same time and like they know pretty much like how the day will pan out. Usually, as a mother, you get up and you're like. I have no idea how this is about to go. And I'm going to, like the unpredictability of it, you're kind of just on this roller coaster of like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen. Like who's going to fall sick, right? Am I, are we going to be driving to the park and, you know, my older son's just going to start throwing up out of the blue or whatever it is. And so you learn to like lean into this unpredictability of your life in a way that I never had to before. You know, like life is always unpredictable for everyone, surely. But when you're managing so many little people with so many unpredictable natures and things that can happen, you got to get flexible. You got to really learn to surrender in a new way to just a life of, okay, I have no idea how this is about to go. The Lord will be in it and everything's going to be fine. That's so beautiful. And, yeah. and, and the agenda thing. I think we have agendas. Like I have like the creative projects. Yeah. Same thing. I'm always creating, I'm always ideating, like writing or dreaming or mm-hmm. doing something like this mom's club. We're doing something. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, like their needs come first. Um, I was supposed to get on this plane to Dallas this last week and we had all these things lined up. And then my sweet Peter, two years old, is sick. Mm-hmm. And so it's like that moment of, okay, I don't want to leave my son. Yeah. I have these other obligations. You know, can I like halves it and like go for just a few hours, like literally make a 12 hour day trip and like, you know, can that work? I can't, I don't want to leave in two days. I mean, there's a whole world that opens up. And Mm -hmm. so that's where that flexibility piece comes into play. But I think that's key in our culture is like making the child, you know, putting Mm -hmm. the child first. And that's one of the problems with a lot of women struggle with is that they don't have, like I have a very understanding employer, like it's a pro-life organization. Yes. You, know? um, you have a very understanding employer yourself. Mm-hmm. And so we're blessed with that flexibility. Yes. But I know how challenging it is for a lot of moms that they're not in, the flexibility isn't there for them. Yes, it's true. I speak to so many women who, they don't have that flexibility because, it, you know, the baby's sick over and over again mm-hmm. and they're like, my paid time off or the just like sick mm-hmm. day, like I've used everything and now like I'm really in a pickle because my employer's like, you have to get back to work and my ke- kids keep getting RSV and the flu and all of these mm-hmm. things and it's so challenging for some of these friends who are, you know, moms who are my friends just to say like I, like there's they, there's just no understanding, there's no compassion there for that. Like it's just about work and it's about your productivity and that can be so so difficult because it is true that like children it's so unpredictable and like putting your children first i know so many couples who are like we had this whole five-year anniversary or 10-year anniversary like totally planned out they'd have been planning it for months mm-hmm. and like the night before not to be talking about throw up all the time but moms are like pretty in tune with that you know one of the kids starts throwing up and then all of all of them you know fall overnight and you're like well our trip to bora bora is like out the window and like as a parent you just learn to be like well this just happens and that's okay. And like you – And the there's be- a plan for it. There's yes. like a reason God allowed this to happen. Yes. And it's going to be good. Yes. You have to – you really have to surrender to that. And in the beginning, it's – I think it's a little bit shocking that – unpredictability you want to control it and i think that that's what motherhood helped me do to um henry now and one of his favorite prayers was lord unclench my fists Mm. and i feel like that is what motherhood has been for me is you just want to like control the plan and you want like things to go how you want it to go and i remember um being pregnant with zion were you sick during your pregnancies do you get really sick? Um, nausea and everything, yeah. fatigue in the first trimester. Yeah, so I was really sick mm-hmm. with Zion, my older. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never felt so out of control in my whole entire life. And that is the Lord's invitation into this, okay, I feel so out of control. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. As things, you know, progress and you want to like hold on tightly to things, but it's this like unfurling of your hands to like mm. live like this mm. as a mother rather than like this because there's so much stress in this and there's like so much peace like in this posture, you that's know? So, that's so true. And it's so, it's biologically true too because I mean, even from the beginning of being a mother, when we become mothers, our bodies are just 
bringing this child into the world mm-hmm. and to fight that. And even like when in the process of birth, like you can't, there's no fighting that. It's, mm-hmm. it's your body is already doing something and it's asking your emotion and your psychology to unite with the mission, which is nurture this little life. Mm-hmm. And that's where like what you said about people contacting you and you know, a lot of w- women reach out to you online and Instagram, I'm sure, and email. And there's so much, I think, I feel hostility towards m- not women per se, but our ability to be mothers and making space for women as mothers in the workplace, in like entertainment and media, everywhere. I mean, mm-hmm. motherhood is a key part of womanhood. Yeah. Every woman is a mother in some way, even if she's not biologically a mother, she's helping other people. I think that's a fullness of like the feminine identity mm-hmm. is to be able to nurture and, you know, mentor mm-hmm. and love another who needs it as we received when we were little. But create it, how do we create a society that's more fostering of that identity of the mother it's, who brings that vulnerability with her? Mm-hmm. Who is uh, who needs flexibility? Mm-hmm. Like you can't just you know put the mother in a box and say like if you're the employer like you have to do X Y and Z no matter what like you have to make space for the child mm-hmm. and the needs of the child. Yes, it's so important. And mothers, in in ways that everybody has some something so beautiful in their unique role and what they've been through and their testimony. Like mothers have such a unique thing to share with the world and you're what you're speaking to i think is so much about the feminine genius Mm -hmm. and um my late mentor she talked about how the feminine genius lies in our ability as women to pay attention not like attention span but pay attention to where there's a need right and how we can meet that need as women and mothers have that in a unique way of just you just you're meeting the needs of these people, whether you're a mother of small children like us or teenagers, right? You just see where they there's some, like something is not right, and you want to nurture and and fix and help. And I think that that's such a unique thing that mothers offer the world is this mm. like intuition, right? Motherly intuition for their own children. But you at with the feminine heart, you see where there's a need, right? And Mary in the Gospels, I love Mary at the wedding feast of Cana. She showed us the feminine genius because she's the one who saw that they ran out of wine because she was paying attention, right? And that is a woman's feminine genius, whatever vocation she's in, is that ability to pay attention and nurture. But mothers do that in a really specific and unique way that adds so much to whatever they might be doing, whether it's their volunteering at church, whether it's their company that they're a part of, whether it's their teaching, whatever it is, that ability to nurture and love with a mother's heart, like a physical mother's heart is really, really special Mm. and something that the world really needs. Mm, It's so good. Mm -hmm. And it makes so much sense too when we consider that I think one of the greatest threats to us as women and you know from a spiritual perspective i think the devil's like favorite thing to do is to take us out of the present moment mm. and to get us worrying or you know feeling fear or feeling stress and not paying attention not being able to pay attention mm-hmm. to the people in front of us mm-hmm. to even our own experience like oh i am stressed right now that's paying attention to yourself like i feel this way if you're living in your stress and you're reacting and operating out of stress or out of fear or out of you know impatience or frustration or whatever that emotion might be worry then you can't pay attention it's hard to pay attention mm-hmm. and it's hard to mother mm-hmm. and that's what i think satan likes to do is like take us out of the present moment get us stuck in the past dwelling on you know, mistakes or dwelling on what could have, would have been or stuck in the future, Mm -hmm. like only thinking about, you know, worrying or wondering instead of paying attention to today Mm -hmm. and who is in front of us, Mm -hmm. including our own kids. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We are kids. Mm -hmm. And therefore living out the feminine genius Mm -hmm. is, is being in the present to see, again, whatever vocation you're in, where is the feminine genius needed like right now in like the situations that I'm in? One of the things that has helped me so much in like looking at presence, like being present to whoever it is, is I stop and I did this yesterday. I think the boys were scootering and I say <laughs> out loud to myself, I say, I'm so grateful for this moment in time. Ooh, that's so good. When I'm like, I say that again, that's a I'm good. I'm so grateful for this moment in time. And that's a practice you have mm-hmm. to my collect life. yourself, yep. not just to be present, because what you're doing there is so powerful, mm-hmm. 
you're not just being present you're being gratefully mm-hmm. present and you're open to whatever that moment has yes it's and beautiful. that i because i'm yes the enemy uses that tactic against me for sure thinking about the past thinking about the future whatever it is mm-hmm. always you know so many things going on in our heads as, as as mothers it's to-do lists like oh my gosh the laundry oh the dinner all these different things and that just like i i'm so grateful for this moment in time and when i'm watching my son's scooter or whatever i just remember like this is a moment mm-hmm. and they are not going to be foreign to forever i could cry just oh, you know I thinking know. about it i'm gonna blink at all the moms at the grocery store they're like oh just blink mm-hmm. and you'll miss it my sons are 40 and 42 and i just know that this moment in time is mm-hmm. so sacred and it helps me just to forget about all of that stuff that's going on in my head and be like i'm just at, in a moment in time and if I'm not paying attention I'm gonna miss it mm-hmm. and I'm gonna be 50 being like man I they were four and two and I was just thinking about all this other stuff when I should have been so grateful mm-hmm. and so in the moment so that has helped me a lot as a person who's like kind of you know can be all over the place and to-do lists and all that kind of stuff you know it's so convicting because I mean even just like the phone and like the incessant to-do lists mm-hmm. and the distractions of daily life it's so convicting to remember that, yes, we only have this day once mm-hmm. and we only have them as two. I mean, you have a two and a four. I have a mm-hmm. one and a three, almost mm-hmm. three. And we only have this time mm-hmm. once. And what we do has a tremendous impact on them, how we use this time. And I think for me lately, it's a conversation I've been having out with Joe and like just friends of, okay, I'm making mistakes. I feel like I'm rushing through the day or, you know, I, I, because me, for me, it's like the routine and like having the right routines for them and being present. And, um, and so I, I've been actually thinking a lot about, okay, what do I do to when I feel like I blew it? Like, you know, like I was, Mm -hmm. I was impatient with Peter, right. Or like, you know, I was distracted. I was on the phone with my mom and then with the handyman. And then I was like, you know, getting back to five friends via text. And like my little son is there like, mama, can you read me a book? And it's like, I was not paying enough attention Mm -hmm. to you. Right. We all have those moments. And so, but like what has been so beautiful is learning that we're not perfect. No mother is. And there's repair you can do um, with your kid, with your child by by, you know, you have this new moment. Okay, do the new moment, you know, Mm -hmm. be present in this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Even if, you know, someone's listening to like, yeah, I'm just not present enough. I'm always on my phone. And then there's the mom worry, like, am I damaging my child because I was too distracted or, you know, they, I left the house, you know, like today when I left the house here, Peter's like, can I come? Can I come? Can I come? And I almost was like, I'm going to bring him, but I know what would have happened. Mm-hmm. He would not have actually had fun in this context. You know, it's not right. really set up for kids right now. In the future, I hope to set it up for kids in the Yay. in the back of the studio. But um, but I'm like, okay, so did I, you know, did we blow it? Did I, did I blow it? But then realizing that he and I, we have this lifelong relationship. And I can, when I'm with him, I can give him my presence mm-hmm. and refill the cup, mm-hmm. rebuild the connection. Mm-hmm. And to not again waste time again Mm -hmm. in the past dwelling on mistakes and everything else that moms like to do Mm -hmm. and don't be your worst enemy you know Mm -hmm. start again today that's the beauty of the even of the child like the child gets up again and is ready for the new day Mm -hmm. and you can start again with them today yes and that 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 has just given me a lot of relief as a mom Mm -hmm. to keep getting up again and i'm going to be a better mom today Mm -hmm. because i felt like yesterday i blew it in these ways but i'm going to do better today Mm -hmm. yeah that um i think for me so much of that is learning just to forgive yourself Mm -hmm. for all the ways like that you have failed and understand that Mm -hmm. we're learning every single day i think we don't give ourselves enough credit because the world so often thinks like, well, you know, you have two weeks of training and you better like be perfect at your job or whatever. There's, I didn't have on the job training for sculpting and shaping a four year old. Okay. So every single day. I'm Wouldn't it be like, cool if there was though? Yes, it would be amazing. Wouldn't but that be like, great? I mean, it would be hard because children are so different all in their own ways. But there's but certain principles. That's true. Of like ages and what they're going mm-hmm. through and experiencing. So learning to forgive yourself for failing, I think, is has been big mm. for me in the sense of like making that resolution, like you're saying, like, I'm going to do better tomorrow. His mercies are new every morning and I'm going to lean into those mercies. And it's going to be so beautiful because I'll learn from the ways that I was like, eh, I should have done that better or I could have whatever it is. Um, and being like, I forgive myself mm. because I'm learning and that's OK. So this brings up a really interesting um concept I think it's so key and I think you kind of might might have mentioned it before but 
mother's intuition Mm. and trusting our gut as mothers. And, you know, God has specifically given you the grace to be the mother of the child that he gave you. There's a real grace there that we have the power to mother our children in a unique way that Mm -hmm. no other mother has. And this is true for adopted moms too. I think God gives you that grace as an adopted mother um, or a foster mom. And, you know, but we can continue to develop and sharpen our instinct. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's not like one and done, you've, you've got an instinct and then it's the same the rest of your life. Like you can, and also our instinct I think can have wounds in it from maybe our childhood Mm -hmm or how we were raised or, you know, ex- bad experiences we had. Mm-hmm. So like the gut is not infallible is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But the gut, you need to listen to it mm-hmm. and and sort of interpret your own gut. Yes. Well, how have you done that in your motherhood? What have been some tools that have helped you with that? A, a lot of prayer of mm-hmm. because I think as moms, there's so many opinions and so much noise that that can really drown out the sound of our intuition and of our gut speaking, which is so important to listen to. I think it, it's easy to read so many books and like, you know, just listen to so many blogs that say like, oh, well, you should do this and you shouldn't do that. And you should do that. And you're like, oh my gosh. And you really just get caught up such in this frenzy that you forget that the Lord is teaching you how to be a mother mm-hmm. before any book is going to teach you how to be a mother. So good. Before any... The power you know, of the Holy Spirit. Exactly. The Holy Spirit is real. And yeah. speaking to you, and I can't tell you how many older mothers I've talked with because I speak at women's conferences and I get to talk to women of all ages who would say about their motherhood, I don't regret every time I did listen to my gut and I regret every time I did not listen. And it's so powerful to just hear them say that of, yes, they can see hindsight's twenty twenty with so many things they can see. I should have listened because my voice, my heart was talking and it's so easy to listen to even the opinions of your own family of saying, this is how Mm -hmm. you should do this. This is, you know, you shouldn't be doing it this way when in your own heart of hearts, your heart is speaking, which is the Holy Spirit. And I think that's a lot through prayer of just like simple prayers. Lord, help me to trust my own intuition as a mother. Help me to believe confidently that you have placed this child in my care, right? Like this child is with me for good reason. And that I am the person who knows how to mold and shape and care for this How child. do you distinguish between your gut and mom guilt? Mm. Because mom guilt feels, has the, has can have the intensity of gut or even more of the intensity of gut because it's this like overwhelming feeling of like, okay, I, I'm like failing here or something's wrong with my child. It's my fault or whatever endless mom guilt things that mm. there are. And by the way, guilt can be an actual blessing to help direct us towards maybe better behavior. Maybe there is something wrong Mm -hmm. in the relationship with our child that needs to be fixed. Like that Mm -hmm. does happen. You know, it's not like moms are infallible, you know? Um, But sometimes mom guilt is just unnecessary, unnecessary, um, you know, what is it? Like just berating of ourselves, right? So what what are your thoughts on that? The mom's guilt versus a gut instinct that is truly from God. Mm -hmm. I think that there's mom guilt in there's not peace there, right? There's like in mom guilt, it's just, it is beating ourselves up over. Yeah, There's like, no hope in mom guilt. Right. It's, good. it's just true. these voices that mm-hmm. say like, you're a failure. You're a mess. Like, look at all those other moms. They could do it so much better than you. Look at how happy their kids are. Look at their family Christmas photo. Look at her in the day to day. That is mom guilt of like, oh my gosh, everybody's doing a better job than me or whatever it might be. It's just like discord and and negativity there when even following your gut, even if it's a really hard thing, right? Like Mm -hmm. your child is in a preschool or whatever and something is telling you like this is not the right fit and I should take this child out. There's this peace there rather than like this discord. Um, And not to say that it's not a hard choice to make. Like there's a distinction between there being like an unrest. And you could even have guilt about having put them in the preschool, Mm -hmm. they feel it's not good for them. Mm -hmm. And that can be kind of mixed around the gut. But the gut is a still small voice saying, make a change. Yes. And if you have the courage to follow through on that, then do away with the guilt. Mm -hmm. Right? Like like just be done with your guilt about it. Yeah. To say Mm -hmm. it's okay that I put my child in this preschool and I've learned a lesson here. Mm -hmm. Right? What have I learned here? There's every day at the end of the day as a mom, you could say, what did I learn today? And you can tuck those little things in your pocket so that you continue to grow as a mother. But I think that that like putting that mom guilt away to say, okay, this wasn't the right choice and it's okay. As a mom, sometimes I'm not going to make the right choice, um, but I'm going to listen to my gut and saying there's peace here in knowing this is the right choice and I'm going to move forward and, and make that That is such there. a good mantra. What did I, so I, I loved your earlier one. 
I'm so grateful for I'm this so moment. I'm so grateful for this moment. And I love the idea as moms of saying it's like, you know, in, in, a, in a spiritual sense, you're making your evening um, examination of conscience. Mm-hmm. You know, you're thinking about how did I do today? And that can be your relationship with your spouse or your friends mm-hmm. or your parents or your classmates or in your place of work and with your kids. But not just like, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? But what did I learn mm-hmm. is the really proactive way of taking that, in, you know, engagement of the day and looking at it and saying, okay, what is good? What is not good? And then what can I do for tomorrow? Mm-hmm. It's do you, So do you write those down? What do I learn? No, what I do just you do? like you just l- reflect them on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because one of the big things for me um, psychologically was I think a lot of times as a mom, you think I have no idea what I'm doing. And I mm-hmm. think especially in early motherhood, you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing because you're learning so many things mm-hmm. changing. I have no idea what I'm doing into I'm learning as I go, like changes everything. Because I have no idea what I'm doing is this negative thing. Like, I'm floundering right. around. I have no idea. No, I'm learning as I go. That's such a positive thing to say. I'm learning here, and that's okay, because I'm going to be learning as a mother when I have an 8-year-old and when I have a 16-year-old, like, for the rest mm-hmm. of my life. So taking that inventory every day of, what did I learn? Because then you put it in your pocket, and you like, can either do better. When you have a second child, when I had my second child, I was like, oh, my gosh, I know mm-hmm. so many things. I know. It's like, this is I, much easier. Yeah, wow. I know <laughs> like, so, so lovely. much more <laughs> yeah. than I did when I had my first because you've talked, you've taken that inventory of, like, mm-hmm. what have I learned? And even subconsciously. It's a habit, a lot of things. You've tucked it away mm-hmm. to so know true. how to do so many things, mm-hmm. to grow your muscles as a mother. Like, you're running a marathon, right? In the beginning, you're like, I ran, you know, 10 steps a day. And you, like, over time, you just, that endurance, that perseverance, that, it like, listening to your gut all of it it takes shape and takes shape and continues to get stronger and stronger and stronger that's so good and Mm -hmm. i love that what did i learn or what am i learning Mm -hmm. from this is only possible and and through taking risks and being a mom is inherently a risk yes saying yes to motherhood is inherently a risk Mm -hmm. raising a child is inherently a risk Mm -hmm. there's risks everywhere risks that we will make mistakes risks that we will mess it up mm-hmm. risks that something bad and good can happen yeah. you know not just bad things happen good things happen too yes, right so many uh, but that like what did i learn today it's if as an like as an entrepreneur i know you're an entrepreneur too mm-hmm. and everything you're like creating and even like with what we're doing now with mom's club it's like you can only know truly once you you know yes you can think about it and analyze but experiencing it and going mm-hmm. through it and trying things yep. um, is a risk, mm-hmm. but it's a way to learn. Mm-hmm. And you can learn all of these things, head knowledge about a lot of things in life, motherhood. You can do yes. head knowledge about, you know, sports, you know, like yeah. this is how you play football. Mm-hmm. I never really played football, but, you know, head knowledge about how to do any number of things, yeah. like the theory. But until the practice happens and you actually try, uh, there's a whole world of knowledge that is not open yet yes. the experience of the thing and you also can't really you know you're never really going to get if you really want to you know do a start a business or you want to you know be a parent one day or whatever until mm-hmm. you take the risks whether it's you know getting into the dating pool or trying an online app or doing any number yeah. of things it's it's a way of life mm-hmm. it's a way of life it's a posture of i'm learning today yes as opposed to the posture of fear yes and control yeah like that Back to your the hands. tension and the stress taking risks you like you you really is a letting go is mm-hmm. this jump and it, it it molds you and shapes you as a person in such big ways you've taken so many risks in your mm-hmm. life with so many amazing things that you've done and like just to look back at the ways that we've you know all the risks that you've taken you know if you take an inventory and you look back on your life in the rearview mirror about how much it, it forces you to grow and forces mm-hmm. you to really depend on the Lord and just, I don't know, uh, allow yourself to be molded and shaped as a person. You mm-hmm. know, risks are really, really beautiful things. And yes, motherhood definitely falls under that umbrella in in the sense of just that letting go of saying, all right, every single day is, is unpredictable. And this is a good thing because this is going to shape me and draw me more toward holiness okay that's another mom's club talk is like calculated risks Mm -hmm. (laughs) because and 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 including with even kids and parenting i mean a lot of that does have to do with our instinct as moms like that does that is a north star Mm -hmm. um but you know because there's a world in which like limitless risk and just just trying things endlessly obviously there's the moral law Mm -hmm. like 
good basic question if you're trying to live a good life mm -hmm. is this moral what i'm doing or not if it's yep. not moral just don't ever do it period yep. right try and, and if you do it you mess up you know get up again and be like, i'm not going to do it do that again yeah so in the world of risk like you know doing something you know when it comes to you know love and romance mm -hmm. if this is something that's not moral like we're not married well don't have sex with them mm -hmm. you know uh whatever it might be mm -hmm. there's the moral law but then mm -hmm. there's also prudence and that's more of an art and that yes. more has to do with you know prayer intuition experience what does prudence look like as a as a mom how do we develop prudence I think also through prayer. It's prayer. I mean, a virtues, <laughs> like right? Prayer and more prayer. <laughs> yes, like the virtues that we learn, whatever it is, of mm -hmm. prudence or humility, it really, it, I mean, it is like a fine wine, fine rosé, whatever mm -hmm. you're going to call it, is that it takes real time to, to learn how to cultivate it. So you don't like pray the litany of humility in a day, right, one time, and yeah. you're like, oh, well check. I'm humble now. But for looking at prudence, it's really this, again, an experiential learning of like, how can I be more prudent in the choices that I make, in the way that I speak, in the way, whatever it is in the day to day. And it sounds like when you say prayer, because that means different things mm -hmm. to different people. But I think a core part of prayer is proper reflection mm -hmm. and yeah. taking time to reflect I remember a wise spiritual friend of mine once told me that prayer is really thinking in the light of, under the light of grace, mm. of God's grace, like in his presence. Now, prayer can also just be like an emptying of yourself in worship or just like, just sitting. Like, yeah. With, you know, like a good adoration. You're just like, Jesus, you're here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to sit. And I don't even know. I don't have an agenda. Yeah, you know, I just want to be, be, just want to be with you. Mm -hmm. But when you're like actively engaging in prayer and thinking about like trying to talk and dialogue mm -hmm. with God. It's our thoughts. So that's the beauty of it. It's very human. Mm -hmm. You know, you can use logic. Mm -hmm. You can have emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, you can talk about everything, but order towards, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to connect with God mm -hmm. who's everywhere mm -hmm. in, in every, you know, is in everything mm -hmm. good and true and beautiful. Mm -hmm. But what do you, how do you like to pray? What do you do? For I think prayer? that one of the funny things about being a mom is that we talk about like reflection and like taking time and you're like, when is there ever yeah, time to do time? that, you know, mm -hmm. which is a very challenging thing as mothers is the ways that your your prayer life, you know, if you have one, if you're a follower of Jesus, changes when you become a mother because mm -hmm. you used to be able to spend an hour in reflection and an so hour true. in scripture and in whatever it is throughout the day, you had this rhythm of prayer. And when you're a mom, it's like totally flipped upside down. And you think like, when will I have a chance to like process mm -hmm. my emotions much less like reflect on anything in life and carving out that time is so important. So back in the day, I would have never been able to do this because my sons have had sleeping trouble, you know, mm. over the years. As children most go through. Kids yep. do. My kids right now, it's like every two hours. Yes. One of them is up. Yep. That's... Every two hours. It's like having a newborn, but there's no newborn in the house. Yeah. You know, you get, you people are like, are three year olds supposed to wake up every hour? And you're like, they just go through these phases, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, and sometimes when he wakes up, it's like he's upset, mm -hmm. like he needs encouragement. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's just like waking up, mm -hmm. um, or or does he even need encouragement? That's like the debate we're having. It's like, do you go in there, or do you let him like just make his little verbal upset yes. noise and like leave him alone? Like I went in there last night when he's and he's like, I'm tired. Stop talking. As I'm like sitting there, like, are you okay? No. <laughs> he's like, I'm stop talking. I'm like, oh, you you actually should be left alone right now. <laughs> I would should just remove you know? back away. Yeah, but again, it's like learning. I'm like, I, I haven't never. This is you've never been this old before and woken up this much before. So I'm kind of figuring it out. So true. So in regards to sleep troubles and prayer, but I I used to see moms like, oh, I wake up at five thirty and I have my coffee and I'm like, oh gosh, there's no way. Like every minute was like has been so necessary for me over for the sleep. last couple of years to sleep. Yeah, same. Right, and yeah. I would see if those moms like if they're sleeping. It's like now's my time to yes. sleep. Yes, and you don't really realize when everybody's like, oh, when the baby's sleeping, when you have your first, like mm -hmm. when the baby's sleeping, sleep. And you're like, I should have done that more because when you have a toddler and a newborn, mm -hmm. you ain't no sleeping space. when the baby's sleeping. It's like nap time for the newborn and the toddler's like, you know, That's throwing fine. blocks at your face. Yeah. Um, so I would see that and I'd be so discouraged. Like I can't get up at 530 and pray. But now that the boys are older, I'm able to do that. So a couple mm -hmm. mornings a week, typically um, I'll wake up earlier and I'll have time to just really pray and be, and that's been 
really refreshing and good, but it's like, it was a specific time where the Lord invited me into that and said, okay, now you can look at do like challenging yourself in this way mm. to do something like this because you're not up every 45 minutes or every hour. Right. It's fine. It's finding the reasonable challenge mm -hmm. Beca yes. and, and realizing that everyone has their own crosses, mm -hmm. rhythms, struggles, mm -hmm. And so, and advantages, you could mm -hmm. even say. And so, to like hear from another mom, oh yeah, well, I get up every morning at yes. the 5.30. Like, and by the way, the 5.30 moms that are out there that do that come hell or high water and that's their thing and they do it well, wonderful. Yes, you know, go like, go, Like, we're not shaming you either. Like, oh, you're inspiring. Uh -huh. But just because another mom's doing it doesn't mean that every mom that is should exactly do it. That is exactly my point. Or has the and capability. It has the capability. Mm -hmm. Like, some people physically need more sleep, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. Like, so... I struggle with depression as a teen. And mm -hmm. for me, like sleep is prayer. I mean, mm -hmm. it really, it's like, do I wake up early and deprive like with the, every two hours or not, they're getting up and whatever. Right. And it's that season. It's like, well, I could get up early and pray before them. But at this season, at this time right now, my sleep is going to be part of my prayer mm -hmm. because I need, I need, I need, I need it. Mm -hmm. Now there's other times during the day you can try to make time, like you're walking them in the stroller and yes. You know, this is my, this is a prayer walk. This is going to be a prayer walk too. Um, but it has to, you have to adapt mm -hmm. and find the rhythm that works yes. for the state of life yes. that you're in mm -hmm. I and not compare too much. Yes. Because those can get, oh now you can be inspired, let yourself be inspired by the other difference. moms, but don't hold yourself to the standard that you perceive they're at. Yes. Otherwise it can get bad it gets it gets ugly <laughs> and you sure. get off your kilter you know internally yeah mm -hmm. it will, comparison as a mom will mess you up and you will not be able to live out the life of abundance that the lord has for you in motherhood one of the game changers for me with prayer and motherhood was um looking at matthew 25 mm -hmm. i made a reel about this on instagram mm -hmm. um so many sweet women are like oh i never thought about it that mm -hmm. way um uh, matthew 25 for i was hungry and you fed me i was thirsty oh, and you lovely. gave me a drink I was naked and you clothed me like how many times do I do that every single day? How many times do you do that every how single lovely. day? And I talked about how when I decided to like find Christ in the faces of my children. That's a Marian prayer. Yeah. Well, because that's Jesus. I mean, when mm -hmm. he says, did you do these things mm -hmm. for me? That's why like Mary is the saint because she did that for him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. And, and I was a prisoner and you visited me. I mean, mm -hmm. she came to the cross. Yes. Um, almost everyone had left and he's imprisoned on the cross literally mm -hmm. with nails and his skin and Jesus is there and every, most has left that left him but Mary's one of the only at the foot yep and he is a prisoner to the nails mm -hmm. he's there you know on prisoner the cross of, a prisoner of love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly and I think it's really easy to think about that literally right I was a prisoner and you visited me people who do amazing prison ministries mm -hmm. and go and then and, and be with prisoners and I was ill and you took care of me. Mm. It's easy to think about like nurses and doctors yeah. and people, you know, in our hospitals right now, caring for so many ill people, but how mothers do this in a very unique way every single day. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. Like how many times am I screwing on those sippy cup tops, you know, to give What's to the prisoner for the, the, for the mom? <sighs> That's a good question. I'm stuck in my house because I am taking care of you. <laughs> right? Because every, like back I'm to a it, prisoner of this, up. of this house. Yeah. yeah I, everybody in the house is throwing up and I'm sorry. I'm a prisoner to the house. Um, yeah. I guess that would be a good know, example. I mean, but I love that, Emily. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Really it's it's really lovely. It really gives you new eyes to see. To mm. see like the people ask Christ. They're like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like where were you like hungry and we didn't feed you? Like where were you like thirsty? And, and like, we just do that every single day, but it's just about this perspective mm. to say like, when I'm doing these things for my children, I'm doing these things like in service of Christ. Mm. And that is prayer, right? Caring for your sick yes. child is prayer. And, um, you know, caring, um, giving your Feeding child a drink. Them. Yeah. All of this can Changing be prayer their diaper. when it becomes an offering of service. That mm. word offering really transformed my motherhood too, that everything is an offering to say, mm. Lord, this is an offering of service and love to you to raise this child that you've entrusted in my care. I'm going to serve and I'm going to serve and I'm going to keep on serving even when it's like stretching me like a rubber band that's like pulled out to its maximum. When you think like, mm. oh my gosh, I don't know how much more I can take. Um, and in those moments, like for you, like, cause that, that moment of like, cause there is that fine line, right? Of like, I don't know how much more I can take and you're going to give a little more cause mm -hmm. more is needed. Mm -hmm. Like that little two year old's not going to change their own diaper or whatever. Yeah. They, maybe mm -hmm. they're not going to potty train themselves, whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? They, you, they need you. Yes. Um, but 
also recognizing that sometimes we need help. Mm. And so it's, 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 it comes back to the prayer and intuition. It all comes back to these same, same things. And also like good counsel, like mm. having people who love you or in your corner who understand what's going on, you can share with, because sometimes like that rubber band that's being stretched and you're offering it, offering, offering it, it can go too much to depletion and there's not a refill. Yes. There's no like stop at the gas station to get the refill mm -hmm. and you are on empty and you might crash. And moms sometimes do crash because they're not taking care of themselves. Yes. And that's not holiness, you know, even if the intention could have been really beautiful, like I'm sacrificing, um, that's, that's actually can just hurt you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not what I'm saying, I guess it's, it's, not, it, it's not holy to not take care of yourself. Um, but it is holy to sacrifice. And there's a lot of gray area there, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, that's why I think like all the self-care stuff for moms is really beautiful and valuable. Yeah, that can also go too far. Like there's, it's like a pendulum mm -hmm. and can swing too far in one direction or the other between like overindulgence and like over depletion, like not yes. caring for ourselves. Mm -hmm. How do you handle that? What do you do to that's know where you're to at? That's something I learn too. Because I think in the beginning, if you become a mother – um, you just, it's hard to say what you need. It's hard to figure out what you need. Right. So I have C-sections, right? Mm -hmm. So 2018, my son was born and you know, you have major surgery. They ask you to stand up three hours later and you're like, what is going on? And then over the next couple of weeks, you're just immersed in this world of like the newborn and you're figuring things out like so rapidly. And you physically can't. Yes. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you're very difficult. Literally wounded. Yes. So those are the first times where you're like, I don't even know what I need. I didn't even know how to tell my husband what I need because emotionally, physically, like I have so many needs. Like I don't like, how can I learn? And it's been a process of learning. Like, what do I need as a mom? What kind of support do I need to thrive as a mother? And how can I ask for that and like put words to that? Mm. And that is a learning process too mm. of saying like, what do I actually need? Do I need to go on a hike? Or do I need to like spend quality time with a friend? Do I need to wake up early and pray? Or yes. do I need to sleep? Yes. That's a real question because exactly. sometimes you actually should wake up early and pray. Mm -hmm. And other times you should sleep. Like you said, a right challenge. Mm -hmm. Like where where we find how to challenge ourselves. And this has you know, been a process for me too. Challenging myself as a mother, mm -hmm. not to a point of depletion, but like in, in a right ordered way of like saying I, I need to grow and I need to like push myself whatever way it is. Um, but learning what you need as a mom and you, like we're, we're talking about Myers-Briggs like as mm -hmm. a person like do you need to go out and just like socialize with friends mm -hmm. for a couple hours and that's going to fill you up so much to the point that you're going to be a better mother mm -hmm. right that the next day you're going to be like oh my gosh yesterday I felt so snippy and just short and all these things but like I just spent like two hours with like you know my really good friend and I just feel really rep replenished and rejuvenated mm -hmm. learning what fills up your cup as a mom I think that takes time too. For me, it's writing. And I had to figure out how to say, like how to communicate that I need that to my husband to say like, you know, I want to write. That's like my favorite thing in the world. And and telling him like, I need to create space in my life for writing and I need you to support me in doing that, you know? So typically that's an early morning thing as well sometimes. Um, but like learning how to verbalize that can be very difficult when you're just learning so much. And especially in the beginning when you just feel like you're drowning in all the things that you're learning and in, in, you know, spit up and all that kind of stuff. Um, learning how to verbalize that can be challenging, but it like you, I, I've learned a lot about that over time. Mm -hmm. And I feel really a lot more confident now four years in with my littles mm -hmm. than I did in the first three weeks. Well, and that gets into another topic for another time, which is the, the dynamic with your spouse. Mm, yes. About, um, if you're blessed with a spouse, the dynamic of your spouse of like how to navigate parenting with your spouse. Yes. I mean, some people, maybe it's like super easy. Other people, it's like all kinds of new challenges you weren't anticipating. Um, but okay. So a few just like fun questions to okay. close us out here. So what is one product that you cannot live without as a mom? Oh, good question. Um, a product that I cannot live mm -hmm. without, like anything from like baby stuff. Uh, it could be a baby stuff thing or it's something that since becoming a mom, you personally can't live without just like a product. It could be a food. It could be an item. It could be decor. It could be clothing. It could be something for kids. What's something that you didn't, you could live without before becoming a mom and now you're a mom and you can't? Um, a really nice water bottle. Hmm. Hydration. Hydration. So 
as a mom, I have a friend. She's like, whenever anybody has a problem, she's like, have you been drinking water lately? You know, if someone's like upset about something, yeah. she's like, when was the last time you drank water? And hydration as a mom, nursing my sons, I've nursed my sons far longer than I ever imagined or thought I would. So that's been a really important part of that. And just hydration is key. So a real, like investing in a really nice water bottle that you enjoy drinking from. I like that. Mm-hmm. That's also washable in the dishwasher and not hand washing. Oh, yes. I, when I like, I always flip it over. I'm like, is this... I can put this in the dishwasher, yeah. right? Because oh, why yeah. do they do that? Why do they create items that you use for convenience that you then you have to hand wash? I totally agree. It just agree seems with you. wildly mm-hmm. unless you don't have a dishwasher, and then you're like, well, sure, yeah. Well, I you can always you can dish you can hand water, wash yeah. a dishwash item though. That's true. You can't dishwash a hand wash. It's item. true. Okay. The next question: What has been the funnest moment for you of the last month? Funnest moment for me in the last month: uh, picking out our Christmas tree. Mm. My sons, now it's so fun. It's a little more hands-off because they're four and two. My two-year-old is even pretty independent. They were running like all over the Christmas, like all down the lines. And I could like see them from far away. Like like, my older son was like sweating through his clothes by the time we were done picking our tree and just having so much fun. Yeah. Did they help pick it? Yes. And that's like Oh, you actually went, they're like, I like that one. You're like, that one's not. Yes, but we have. We, we still, kind of picked it as a family, okay, okay. and um, we it's a well, like a tradition my whole life with my family. And so just to see my sons there enjoying so was really special. That's so the fun sweet. thing is like bringing your traditions into your family mm. is like fun to do. So that was great. So sweet. Okay, mm-hmm. and then what is your one mom treat that you is a go to for you? Oh, my one mom. What's treat? a mom treat? We're having rosé and chocolate and here. Chocolates. Which isn't even my mom treat, but we did it today because it's kind of a treat. Yeah. But what's a mom treat that you love? I like a, like a really nice iced coffee. Hmm. I would like a good, just like a good quality coffee. Speaking of all of like the little sleepless nights, like I can, I enjoy that. Do you, do you make treat. it yourself or you have a place no, you go I, that like There's like different the... places around town that I okay. enjoy going. Uh, can I ask you, what's your pro- oh. mom product you can't live without? Oh my gosh, I wasn't planning to. Okay, well, I, 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 I'm going to do it. What's my one turning. product? My one product I can't live without? Um, Hand lotion? Mm. Body lotion Good that one. I really like feel nourishes my body. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Dry skin. Maybe it's also just like time of year, but I feel like how my skin feels as a and mom. There's a lot of hand like washing, washing, washing diapering. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I, lotion. Okay. Love it. Okay. What was the other question I asked? Um, oh. Funnest moment. Funnest moment in the last month. What is the funnest moment in the last month? We went and got donuts. Fun. That was really fun mm-hmm. and watching my son really pick out his donut and like change his mind 10 times. Yeah, I don't like know. There's the something about like, like a child and something. a donut. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's cool it's to watch fun. that like process of thinking. Yeah. My son does that. If we yeah. like back in the day when he was small, if, every once in a while, he would get to pick out a Hot Wheel at the store. Oh, I do watch that. him That's like, so like he's very analytical, yeah. like my husband with a selection, like, like <laughs> looking at every single one and really thinking, I'm like, I'm learning so much about you right now. And what like, is watching you do this? Oh, uh, like a different, like every, this was like every ones. couple of months. Yeah, he's always a, a different one. Very kid. And he would think about the he's ones that he sweetheart. already had and like think what about a sweet it. sweet boy. Yeah, oh, so goodness. I would love, I would be like, oh, I'm learning so much so watching sweet. you do this. Mm-hmm. Well, it's cute with Peter because he like goes for the like brightest colorful one first. Fun. And then he like reconsiders because mm-hmm. he notices there's other choices. Mm-hmm. And then he usually lands on something. And it like it's so just, much. It's so cute. Mm-hmm. It's so fun. And then your mom treat. I mean, my first thought to my mind was my hot coffee in the morning, mm-hmm. but that's not, I don't know if that's enough of a treat because it's like, you just need your coffee. Yes. But it's a very ritual thing for mm-hmm. me too. Um, I do love the dark chocolate pretzels from Trader Joe's. Mm. I put that in the cupboard and I like around 2 p.m. if I'm home, working from home or whatever, mm-hmm. I'll like, like our babysitter was there the other day and like I came home and I went right to the right to the cupboard or right to the pantry and I'm like in there with my little getting my little and she like walks in and she's like I'm like standing there and she's like oh you're home I'm like yeah You're I'm like getting, this is my mom I'm just treat, like okay. re entering the, mm-hmm. the workplace and I'm getting my pretzel so they're really good tasty I'll have to try it yeah maybe next time we'll, well thanks we for the chocolates today yeah. these are pretty awesome yeah thanks for chatting appreciate so you fun. so much thanks for you're, having me you're an awesome mom. You're an awesome mom, too, and I don't think moms can hear that enough. It's true. Just, you know, if you're out, you see a mom. But you, you, like really, you're doing a great job. you really are an awesome mom because I've you. seen you with your boys, and you're just collected and loving and fun. And Thanks. You're, you're rocking I it. I love being a mother. I love being a mother, and I'm so grateful for that. You're rocking it. Thanks. You want to make a toast? Okay, yeah. Uh, I will toast to to the mothers who are living and loving and serving and 
digging in um, every single day. That's my toast. And who's yours too? Cheers. Well, we'll make them both we'll together. Okay. Drink. To all so the mothers. We'll this one. Let's start again. <laughs> what happened? Wait, what was the matter? He can laugh. You can, can laugh. Go? Yeah. I can. Oh, Audience okay. participation. Oh god. Okay. okay. And I'm gonna toast to mom friendship. Okay. Because I think mothers need each other. And I appreciate you being here. I me. absolutely <laughs> agree with you. Thanks I'll cheers my microphone as well. <laughs> like, that's everybody listening. Mm-hmm. Cheers for being part of this friendship. Yes. Cheers to our sponsor. This is actually not a sponsor, but maybe they will sponsor us. Yeah. Sophia. It's delicious. Thank it's you. It actually is good. And I like that name, Sophia. It's a cute name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>